OK, so uh, since you have this assignment that's due real soon, I figure we should talk about resolution and first order logic. OK, let's do it. Um, first thing we got to do is make the problem simpler, right? What do you do? Is, is, is there any question before we move on? No, OK. So uh, first thing we do, of course, when we're faced with a difficult problem as computer scientists is we make it simpler. Uh, so we're going to take, uh, or rather I, <laughs> as the writer of the simplifier, uh, wrote something that does this. But you still know how to have to know how to do this. You're not going to have to code it up, but you're going to have to like do it on both this exam and the final. So plus, it's, so yeah, it's just good to know. Um, so it's kind of like the same process for propositional logic, but a little bit different. Um, so we want to simplify the form that formulas can be in. So that when we start talking about inference, we can just have you know one inference rule to one inference rule to rule them all, and it will be very easy to do inference because we'll have all our formulas written in this simple conjunctive normal form. Okay, so let's uh, let's write something down first. Um, so why don't you guys code this up? Okay, who's got number one for me? Lee. For all, sir. For all X. And what? What did you say? Y plus y. Anyone have comments on this? If y is a fish, then this is going to be true. If y is not a fish, then the thing's still true without making, without it's telling us whether it's liked or not. But if it is a fish, then it's definitely liked. Okay, number two. Nathan. I don't even remember what number two was. Um, Joe's a cat, maybe, or something, or cats eat everything they like. Or? For all x, for all y. Awesome. Looks good to me. Makes sense to everyone else? OK. Uh, what's the next? I don't even remember the next one. Kendall, what's the next, what's, what's the next one? Joe's a cat. 
Help me out here, Kendall. I think we should just make Joe a constant. Yeah, Joe's a constant and a I, I just make Joe a constant. So what would I write then? Is is a terrible, terrible name for a predicate. I regret choosing it here. It's uh, one of the greatest errors in artificial intelligence, actually. Um, it's called the, the is a problem. In the early days of knowledge engineering, people would write is a to say, like, is a Joe, or is a cat Joe. Uh, but they would also say something like, is a cat comma mammal, uh, things like that, when those are actually two very different relations. One is between objects and the other is between categories. Objects, by object, I don't mean object as in the first order of syntax sense, I just mean uh, you know, an instance of a class versus a class itself. So um, if you want to be a proper knowledge engineer, we should be saying something like is instance of or something like that. Joan. Doesn't bother me. I don't know, we'll find out soon. When we try and prove something, I mean, the proof of your knowledge engineering is can you have the kind of inferences you want? What are we supposed to prove? Joe's a, Joe's a, Joe's a cat, no. Joe eats fish. Okay. So the query itself, this is the way I write it when I'm doing a proof, so I recommend it to you. So the proof is we're trying to prove eats Joe Fish. So that's the query. But we're going to do just like we did with uh, propositional logic. We're going to do resolution refutation theorem proving. What's that again? Assuming Jeff will tell us. You got it. So the negated query is not eats Joe Fish. OK. All right, now before we can do inference, we've got a problem. Statements one and two are not in CNF. Help! OK, time for some CNF action. All right, let's fix this. Uh, so how are we going to solve this? So the first step in uh, converting to CNF is to get rid of implication. So uh, who wants to go next? Tyler. I mean, the next, we make progress on this. You don't have to convert it all the way to CNF, but make, please do, do something to help this poor wolf <laughs> get to CNF. Hmm. What's implication again if we have A implies B? Not, not A or B. So how can I just recommend a not? And an or? Uh, okay, and what about, what about right here? <laughs> How about not is yeah. y fish? Beautiful. Okay, good. That's progress. Or likes x, y. Um, and this was, this was uh, sort of parenthesized, so to speak. Um, okay, so that's the first step. Get rid of implication. Now what do we do, push negation around? Is that the next step? Uh, whoa, whoops. <laughs> Too many things to push. Yeah, push negation inward. Beautiful. OK, so I see there's some negation. Uh, what? What? Ah! I, whoa! <laughs> this is too much technology for me. OK. So this or this? Uh, so negation is already pushed in as far as it can go. So we're good there. Uh, let's see. 
You know, you know that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great question. Um, just for the moment, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just do something sneaky. Does everyone see how this quantifier is all about why? And why doesn't occur or, or yonder. So we can take the why and just drag its sorry ass out to the very front. Um, so we've got for all x, for all y. And, you know, meaning is preserved. Not is y fish or likes x, y. Uh, now let's see. What's this about these double ors? What can we do about that? This or that. So A or B or C, that's got to be equivalent to A or B and A or C, right? So this we should be rewriting. And now, oh, OK, someone was talking about quantifiers. Um, where are my slides? There we are. Standardized variables apart. We don't have to do that step because our we don't have our variables are all separate. Eliminate uh, existentials. We don't have any existentials, so I don't even have to tell you what a scolum function is yet. Move uh, universals to the front. We did that. Move and outside. We did. Um, I do have to. I do have to uh, worry. I have to get the or straightened out here. So we have to rewrite this. So now. If there were any existentials, we would have removed them by now. So now we know that every variable that appears is universally quantified, which is a beautiful thing. So you might, there's some magic that happens that lets us remove existentials, which I'll talk about before the end of class today. Um, but as a result, I don't have to write these anymore, which is great because it saves ink and oh, headache. So now I can just write is x cat or not is y fish. And not is x cat or likes x y. Phew, so that's nice. And these, this is CNF. This is a big, it's an and. I didn't even write the and because everything's going to get anded together. Um, and we, these things are just ors. And they're nice, short, little either things. It's either a predicate. Or a negated predicate. This is CNF. You know, this is nice, simple. I know how to deal with this. It's good. Simple, uniform format. As computer scientists, we are happy. Okay, so that was good. Where does the and come from? Uh, so I don't know. It seemed to me that um, A or B or C was equivalent, and you, all you logic people that just took this in your ACE class can tell me if I'm wrong. It seemed to me that that was equivalent to A or C, I mean A or B, and uh, A or C. Is that right? I think it's right. It seems right to me. Yeah. I'm, I never memorize anything, uh, except the implication symbol goes to not or. That's the one thing of logic that you need to know. And everything else is just common sense. This is just common sense. It's not right? Oh, you're right. Because B is a nest. Uh, uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think you're right, too. I think we only need to remove parentheses. Wow, that's embarrassing. <sighs> yeah, no, you're right. Because uh, yeah, if only b is true, we still want it to be true. And this is allowing, well, except we've, if, if, uh, Truth table. Okay, I've got a little truth table. Uh, a, B, C, but it's going to have eight lines. I don't like that. Um, uh, true, true, true. Yeah, it is. Okay, fine. Gosh, you guys are harsh. True, true, false, false, true, false. 
Um, now, A or B or C, um, um, okay, so one is going to be true, true, so all these are true, uh, all these are true, so this is, uh, um, and this is false here. Okay, so now if we do this, and we're like, hmm, what do we get there? So A or B, yeah, okay, uh, and A or C. So all the ones with A are going to be true, so that's great. Life's good. Now, here it gets tricky. Well, we've got B and C, so we're true. Here we've got only B, so this is false. So... Here is the <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay. All right. Excellent. All right. So this was all wrong. Uh, <sighs> all right. So this is supposed to be not is uh, x cat uh, or not is y fish or likes. X, Y. All right. That's good. Thank you for correcting that. These pens are not the best. All right. Okay, so that was statement one. Now, we had a whole bunch of them. We still have to deal with statement two. So I'm going to, maybe I'll copy down here. I'll call it two prime. Uh, should I do it in green? I don't know. Two prime are, oh, this is one prime, sorry. One prime, this is our new version of one. Not is uh, x cat or not is y fish or likes x, y. Okay, so let's do this second statement now. Let's do this second one, which is uh, for all x, for all y, uh, X cat and likes X Y implies eats X Y. Cats eat everything they like. So, who's going to take a first crack at this? Jen, you want to you want to do the first crack at statement two here? Um, for all X, for all y. Yep. Y. Yep. Oh wow, you're 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 let's let's do this one step at a time. This is the biggest way to make mistakes in logic is to is to think you know what you're doing. And I as happens to me all the time, to see previous slide. Uh, so let's just can we do it one step at a time? Can we can we just do the not um, Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Let's do it one step at a time. And now, let's think long and hard about what comes, <laughs> what we do here. So we have a not, we have a not A or B, not A and B. So this is, yeah, this is going to be not A or not B. So let's just keep going here. We've got our not is X cat or not likes, I know especially in like an exam situation or something, you're all like, oh, I've got to be fast, but then you're going to regret it. Okay. So that was pretty straightforward. And now we can drop the universals. So things are good. Okay, so now we've got two prime. Uh, two prime is uh, not is x cat or not likes x y. Boy, the bleed through on this paper is awful. I'm gonna have to bring 24 pound paper next time. Okay. Okay, so we have one, two, three, and the negated query. Uh, 